and we're back and today we're going to talk about a subject I'm very happy to talk about, uh, the current coalition on the left for the French um, parliamentary election, which will take place the 12th and 19th June. And yes, yeah, something very special is happening since there has been a coalition on the left and it's the first time such a coalition has been built in 25 years. So it's a momentous event. How momentous will it be? It needs to be seen and it's something that we're going to discuss today. And isn't the Socialist Party that institution? Well, it's dead, but it's still moving. What happened with the with the Socialists is really interesting, and I'll get there in a minute. But first, uh, one very funny aspect uh, of this coalition was the very nuanced and balanced reactions that the announcement uh, elicited on the right in the Macronist and even in parts of the left, let's say the right of the left. So Well, we agreed that I will that I will prepare a bit of the without reading any French media that I will prepare a bit of some of the reactions uh, from mainstream media. Yeah, so so just to be clear about the game here, I haven't said anything to Nast about this reaction except that they were really funny and uh, and he's been tasked by trying to guess what the what the commentaries were. So Give it up. The first one is that this is the collapse of the European Union. The second one is that we're going to move into the French Soviet Socialist Republic. Then, of course, being a Spaniard, I cannot hold it, but say that you're going to turn into French Venezuela, French Venezuela. This coalition is full of Islamo-Marxists and... Yeah, that's uh, that's how how far I I got. Okay, so this is ex this is extremely close. Uh, the the European concern was there at first, but it's sort of uh, but it's sort of waned. So I would say that the only one that you don't really have. Uh, but yes, yeah, so some quotes about the about this coalition. So from President Macron, this is a project who, which uses uh, communitarism. Uh, from Marine Le Pen, this coalition will just be made of defenders of the Black Bloc and Burkinis. Um, the, from a, from a right, <laughs> right of the left uh, pundit, uh, this is social democrats allied to neo-Bolsheviks. Uh, of course, especially uh, the, um, the, the other parties in the coalition have been called uh, to sign up for capitulation, for betrayal of Republican value, that, uh, that La France Insoumise, the main driver, has been staging a coup. Uh, one of my favorites, so the co-director of the main uh, right-wing newspapers, say that uh, the Mélenchonie will be redistribution without production, uh, social sovereignty, delirious fiscal, fiscal pressure, unlimited uh, borderlessness, apocalyptic ecologism, laid-back communitarism, um, this, uh, this open Islamo-leftism is a departure from the Republican left. Um, the concept of the Islamo-leftism is, uh, is fascinating. <laughs> yeah, well, it has been covered through and through that this is just a reactualization of the Judeo-Bolshevik scare of the 1930s. It has mm. been debunked through and through because there is no such ideology. But it's disqualifying terms, like it's just put together the two things that exactly. uh, that the, the and that's the, my reaction as well i'm not i'm not arguing at all that there is no people strong and uh, strong people and and a uh, and solid thinking on the left in the in the islam in, in, in the islamic world or in the islamic worlds but what i'm saying is that this is pretty much a mix of bad guys of movies or concepts for bad guys of movies of Stallone, right? Yes, def definitely. But uh, but one very funny criticism is about that it's um, that it's just an um, that this uh, union coal leftist coalition actually means to win the election. And what? That 
Yes, that, so they are trying to win the election. Can you imagine that? What? <laughs> yes, yeah, so a very strong criticism that this is a purely electoral agreement, that they are just doing it to, doing it to win, that they are giving up on any principles uh, just, so, just so that they can win the, win the election. Uh, for example, this quote is from uh, Elizabeth Levy, which is um, a very prominent uh, right-wing uh, pundit on the French media. And C'est bizarre! Yes, and she said, I quote, I'm really resentful to leftist voters who do not care about principle. They are not principle at all. What they would just want is the union to win to win the election. <laughs> who, who could have thought? Who, who could have thought? Well, because the because the um, the mainstream media and the the liberal right and and even the and even the far right were very happy to have a left that was mostly broken down and was and and that the main electoral conflict would be with the liberal right and the far right because then they then they didn't have to to worry to worry about uh, about anything so yeah this one this one is uh, is really is really quite funny because until now what you were saying is that the um The socialists, so the, the traditional left party, because it's uh, in France like it's been the case in Spain and, and probably many other, in many other countries in, in, in Europe, uh, it's been a bipartisan uh, divide. No? Yeah, exactly. Between the left uh, or so-called left mm -hmm. or a centrist, somewhat progressive bloc and, uh, and the right and the right wing uh, getting together the conservatives and the liberals. Yeah, exactly. But most, im most importantly, and, uh, and this is what has disqualified the socialists lately, is that even the, the old socialist party had converted to, uh, to economically liberal policy. So in that enabling private, uh, private company, doing tax cuts for the company. So the, so the economic policy, whether from the socialist or from the conservative bloc, was more or less the, the same and and this co this coalition which interestingly doesn't have a, a program that is more radical than when the socialists were advocating for in the 80s but the but the the but the the consensus has veered so much to the rights that know uh, what this coalition is offering which is basically a social democrat uh Uh, leaning is really considered on the far left uh, or even radical left, as we said last time. So the the, the core program, just uh, just to say, so they want to raise minimum wage to 1,400 euro uh, after taxes, uh, allow retirement at 60 years of age. It's currently 62 in in France, and Macron wants to push it to 65. Um, to cap uh, prices for uh, first necessities goods, to engage in an ecological planification, uh, and especially to to reduce uh, to reduce CO2 output, uh, to set up a youth allocation, to reduce uh, youth poverty, uh, and also a constitutional reform to to change the, the the political problems and democratic problems with the with the French uh, Fifth Republic, uh, and also renationalize some um, some vital industries and fight against uh, fiscal evasion. So that's the uh, that the core elements on which the on which the coalition was uh, was built just uh, just to show what the program is it is definitely a leftist program but again it's less radical than one what was pushed by the by the social by the historical socialist parties from the 1930s to the 1980s but again then they moved so much towards uh, towards a liberal stance that this very small uh, objective uh, sounds very radical in this day and age <laughs> It is, it is something that I have just started to come to come to terms or to or to actually have an understanding of, and that's that from the 90s, the socialists actually it's there's what it's called the third wave socialism, mm -hmm. right? And that's uh, what you're saying. It's an adoption of macroeconomic liberalism as a truth of nature let's say and and then we need to accept uh, it uh, 
free market uh, capitalism or at least uh, an unregulated capitalism as the as the rules of the game is that yeah, kind of what it stands for yeah exactly that's a famous tina you know there is no alternative and and in france it was called the second left but it's or and um But it's the same idea that if the left wants to be a party of government, they have to be pragmatic. This term uh, came back, uh, came often, very strongly. And that uh, that you cannot change uh, the uh, free market capitalism system. You just have to adjust to it and to and to correct uh, its most uh, its most brutal effect and inequalities. But fun fundamentally, yeah, there is a notion of you need to have liberal policy because that's the only way that you can uh, that you can run uh, run a government and uh, and whether this is true or false will of course depend on which side of the political spectrum you're you're sitting uh, and obviously this is what is uh, what is very uh, particular here especially with the recent uh, electoral success of uh, of la france insoumise is that uh, from the get go it was a movement that that said that they wanted to depart from capitalism or have a policy that was uh, that took its roots in anti-capitalism. Uh, I'll get more on this later, but uh, but this is really the the, la the line in the sand. Do you want to to accommodate uh, with uh, neoliberal uh, directions and policies, or do you really want uh, a break for a break from it? One of the things that I that I struggle with when I think of old school socialism or all let's say even even modern modern discourse on uh, on socialist and left leftist themes is that capitalism in a way or liberalism in a way has some design advantages as a system just a Uh, on the localization of the problem solving selves right it atomizes much more the problem solving so so let's say if we have to have a master mind that is actually figuring out how the whole distribution of the country goes and tries to do a fair equation or a fair distribution of the resources across a large country it is it it soon becomes too wicked too convoluted it has too many factors too many diversities too many local adaptations are required so the central rule or the central uh, direction is in a way very absurd or or can turn very absurd in some of the of the of the uh, adaptations to the local context mm -hmm. so I think that there is something that we still haven't cracked on the micro localization on on how to translate I mean probably anarchists will say that they have cracked it all alone but uh, but th there's something systemic that I don't think it's a minor theme to to disregard on how can we both leverage a fair distribution and a fair policy setting with a localization and a, using the intelligence of atomized uh, decision making yeah but i think uh, because um i think in terms of organization and like spatial organization dynamics of uh, dynamics of flux exchanges exchanges and everything this is uh, i don't think that this would disappear if we had a Um, change of politics from capitalism uh, when in this context and in the context of uh, leftist coalition when we talk about departure from capitalism the the core definition of capitalism is uh, looking for profit no matter the cost human and envi environmental and otherwise and and for example something that I find very um, very interesting lately uh, I read an article about how a lot of big companies are restructuralizing in a hurry because the because looking for profit and compressing costs at all costs led to this extremely globalized integrated economy but then suddenly with the with the covid crisis there has been uh, shortages of uh, of supply all over the place and suddenly a lot of uh, companies are starting to to redevelop their supply chain more chains more locally because uh, because this search for profit 
suddenly made them build a whole uh, just-in-time uh, manufacturing process with no with no stocks and and made them suddenly vulnerable to a, to a big crisis. So, the idea of uh, of optimizing and decentralizing uh, production centers or decision or the decision making process. Uh, I don't think that it's that this is an element that's inherent to capitalism and, and that should be lost in, in the same way. Uh, something that's often um, that's often very discussed is that uh, a lot of anti anti capitalism discourse is about uh, ending um, ending non-usage private property and usually people will answer very smugly oh then we're just going to take your house it's like no it's just uh non-usage uh private property so if you own your home and you live in your home and that's uh, and that's your main residence obviously you can have this kind of private property but however non-usage private property so meaning uh big companies that own thousands of lodgings and keep some of them empty just so that the prices can go up this is uh this is exploitative private property and this is something that uh, that could be done with and, and actually the fact that for example in berlin the municipality is talking about uh about re-nationalizing or taking over some of those empty lodgings because uh, speculation has created such a massive housing crisis this is the kind of breach from capitalism we're talking about so can we go back to the to the core uh, points of the of the political program of of this uh, of this uh, left uh, coalition. Yes, so there is this left coalition is called the NUPES. So, so it's quite an ugly acronym. It's it's it means uh, the New Union, political, uh, ecological, and and social. So uh, and and that's very shocking because it's a name that has actually some ideological component is it in it and doesn't look like a perfume brand. Uh, Shocker, I know. But it's, <laughs> it doesn't sound really awesome. I, I will <laughs> say with my marketing glasses on, I'm not going to approve of it, of the new piece, but uh, Yeah, the, the new, it's a bit of an ugly acronym, but at least it, it says what it's, uh, what it's supposed to, to say. Um, anyway, so yeah, getting back on the, on the core program. So it's uh, for 1,400 euros of minimum wage yes is that a yeah. mo a monthly salary of 1400 yeah it it's currently i mean depending on where you are but between uh between a thousand and uh, and 1200 uh so something something like that um what else uh what else uh lowering the age for retirement so to to mm. see to 60 years it's currently 62 and macron wants to push it to 65 um uh, cap prices for first necessities good to fight uh, the current inflation uh, to have ecological planification so it's mostly investing in renewable uh, in renewable energies and uh, and uh, decarbonate uh, decarbonate the energy sector and production uh, create a, a youth allocation because in France we have a huge problem of uh, of youth poverty um, and and create a thick republic. I, I'll get back on the notion of uh, of thick republic uh -huh. um, because the, yeah, it's it's about the political crisis that that we currently have, um, and also uh, reinfor reinforce uh, the fight against uh, fiscal evasion and re and and open the door to renationalizing renationalizing uh, essential uh, structures of uh, sectors of the economy yeah the condoning of fiscal paradises and of uh, fiscal loopholes is just baffling <laughs> i really i've been i've been following some of the european commissioners that are that are fighting hard in the in the against against fiscal evasion or at least uh, being very vocal about it and trying to to make it visible and trying to um, platform what are the what are the contrasts and the the paradoxes uh, that um, that that we that we're living in and it's just it's just bananas uh, like thinking that the city that uh, that even london it has its own fiscal paradise in the city no in that mm -hmm. uh, square mile in the in the banking in the banking banking sector and how this was basically a rebranding or a refurbishing of their economic system once the empire was uh, was uh, need, needed to be dismantled 
Yeah, and you and you don't have to to go very far in the UK again. Uh, <clears throat> right now, <coughs> from what I read, the uh, Jersey and Guernsey, the the islands are also uh, very popular for that. And um, and just within the European Union, uh, Liechtenstein, for example, has also a lot of uh, of fiscal uh, fiscal evasion mechanics. So yes, it's everywhere and uh, and. As we've read with the Lux Leaks, Panama Papers, and, and so on and so forth, what we're talking about is potential billions uh, in terms of uh, in terms of loss of uh, of loss of money. But again, if we define uh, the current capitalist system as getting profit, whatever the cost, then having fiscal evasion and tax loopholes and so on and so forth is perfectly normal. It's not a bug; it's a feature of the of the system. But that definition of capitalism it's very i think it's very non constructive or at least it's it it brings a picture of the a picture that it's um, that it's even far from what the the conception of most people that will consider themselves capitalism capitalists will because the positive capitalism of uh, Peter Drucker as, let's say, the prophet of all of all uh, modern capitalist uh, systems is about creating value for the stakeholders. So it's about shared value. It's about creating solutions for society. It's and it's about creating wealth by creating valuable services and valuable experiences for for society and anyone that uh, that actually moves the needle or moves uh, their organizations in a in a meaningful manner in uh, in in capitalism i would say that it's much more leaning on those ideas as the drivers of uh, their philosophical under trappings uh, than than the than the 70s uh, maximize shareholders value not even michael porter's uh, anymore who is the the one that articulated that if i remember correctly um has has outgrown that uh, that kind of framing yeah but uh, extreme speculation for speculation sakes exist and <clears throat> and it's not that whole you don't have to get back to the 70s and 90s because the 2008 crisis was also a speculative uh, speculative crisis if you um... I'm not saying that it doesn't have an important uh, anchor and that it doesn't have an important impact in society that part of the of the f that philo that part of the philosophical tenant of capitalism I'm just saying that uh, from where I'm standing uh, and and my own personal experience has been more that that is one of the one of the forces of nature of uh, of capitalism. It's mm -hmm. not the single definition of it. Okay. All right. Shall we stop here and uh, continue later? Yes, and uh, and for the continuation, I want to get back to the four parties that are part of the coalition and tell a bit about uh, their history, how they came to the coalition, what they got out of it, and uh, and the tension because there's quite a lot of interesting histories in here, and of course talk about the man who started it all, <coughs> and with a very huge figure on the left, uh, Jean-Luc Mélenchon, of course. Great, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank <clears throat> you.